tonight we are going to start looking at the central nervous system and um, we're just specifically going to look at the brain. Um, remember that when we talk about the central nervous system, we're talking about both the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is um, the most complex of organs of the body. It controls every single body activity. The brain itself, um, if you look at it, it looks rather unimpressive um, in comparison to the amazing things that it can do. Um, when you look at it, you wouldn't really think that um, it's as powerful and controlling as it is. The brain itself weighs just about three pounds. It's made up of several different parts, probably parts that you've heard multiple times um, growing up from the point of when you were in elementary school um, up until you've had some science classes. Hopefully um, it's mentioned in biology class more recently. Um, each part controls a different part of our body function and the brain itself is, we could kind of describe it as two fistfuls of a pinkish grayish um, tissue. If we're looking at um, the brain itself, it's kind of wrinkled, almost like a walnut. The, sh the um, cerebral hemispheres are kind of kind of resemble a walnut. Um, if you, um, as you're looking at it, it's the texture of um, cold oatmeal. I personally don't really like oatmeal. Um, it's a texture thing for me. <laughs> I can't eat it. Um, but it's the kind of that same texture. Okay, then when we're looking at the brain, um, we talked about the different parts. There's the cerebrum, the thalamus, the hypothalamus. If you remember, um, hypo means below or under. So the hypothalamus is under the thalamus. The cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla, medulla oblongata. When we're looking at the cerebrum, um, we call that, um, it, we're talking about the two cerebral hemispheres, okay, together they make the cerebrum. It is the biggest part of the brain. The biggest portion of the brain is, is the cerebrum. It's the most superior part. So it's kind of this top um, part of our brain. Um, the cerebrum itself is much larger than the other three brain regions combined. Um, when we are, um, if you think about the, um, the brain, if you look back at, oh, it's not in the picture. Um, but if you look at a picture of the brain, you can tell that the two um, cerebral hemispheres are kind of divided. Um, by a deep groove um, that separates the regions of the brain. We call those fissures, F-I-S-S-U-R-E-S, -S -S -E okay? The different areas of the brain are um, called um, lobes. They are um, named for the cranial bones that lie over them. So the frontal, the parietal, the occipital, and the temporal. Okay, and there you can see um, where this would be like the front of the brain. Okay, so the frontal bone would lie right over that. The parietal would lie over the, um, this blue portion, the occipital over the pink, and then the temporal over that purple. Okay, when we're looking at the cerebrum or sometimes called the um, cerebral cortex, that's the outer portion of the cerebrum. Um, some things that it is um, responsible for would be speech, memory, logic, emotional response, um, consciousness, interpretation, interpretation of sensation, and voluntary movement. Okay. The ventricles 
of the cerebrum. Um, that's where the cerebrospinal fluid is contained. And the cerebrospinal fluid protects the brain and the spinal cord kind of by acting like a cushion. It's a clear, um, colorless liquid or fluid, and it's um, sometimes drained out um, either for relief of pressure or to be uh, analyzed for diagnosis. Okay, then we have a section of the brain. It's called the interbrain, if we're looking at kind of this part here. Okay, um, it's called the diencephalon, D-I-E-N-C-E-P-H-A-L-O-N. Okay, so that interbrain sits on top of the brain stem and the cerebral hemispheres kind of come around. Um, around it. They kind of enclose that part of it. Okay. So the thalamus itself is um, what we call either the triage, we refer to it as the triage center or um, the, the relay station um, for sensory impulses. Um, if you think about triage, um, triage is, is deciding what's important and what's not important. Right now, um, in the work that I'm doing at the hospital, um, I'm not triaging, but we're, we're going through patients and kind of determining, um, you know, those patients that have some COVID symptoms, we spend a little time with them. If it's not emergent, they're not having a great amount of um, shortness of breath. We spend some time with them, determine which, what are their symptoms that they have, and then we mask them to keep the ER staff safe. Okay. We've also still had some um, heart attack patients coming in, some stroke patients coming in. We've had um, several gentlemen um, cut the tip of their finger off or um, cut a big chunk of their finger. Okay. So the ER goes through and triages all those things. They decide what's the most important. Well, you know, the stroke, the heart attack, um, major bleeding, and right now the COVID. Those are the ones that um, are most important. The sprained ankle, the little cut in the finger, um, the, the kid that stuck something in his ear. Those are less important. Okay, so the thalamus is, is kind of that role in the brain setting what's important, what's not. The thalamus is also what um, maintains levels of awareness and consciousness. The next part of that, the hypothalamus, remember hypo means below. So that um, area below the thalamus, okay, it contains um, neurons that control um, some of the vital things of um, our, our life, our existence, body temperature, um, body, body or um, water balance, metabolism. It controls our... Um, emotions, our appetite, our thirst, our sexual desires, our fear, our pleasure, okay, all of those things, the hypothalamus um, regulates the hormones which are being released from the pituitary gland, okay, and runs and um, manages the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Then the next kind of section um, you can see it on here, this area here is um, the brainstem, okay? The brainstem, if you took your thumb, the brainstem is about the same size as your thumb in diameter, and it's about three inches long, okay? There's different parts of the brainstem. We have the midbrain, um, which is the is a small portion of the brainstem. Then we have the pons, which is kind of called, um, referred to as the bridge, and that's what controls our breathing. Then we also have the medulla oblongata. That is the most inferior portion. It's this green portion on our diagram here. Okay, it's another portion of the brainstem. It's what connects the um, spinal cord to the rest of the brain. Very, very important. Okay, um, the nerves um, can go from right to left and left to right in the medulla oblongata. Okay, so those nerves 
on the right side, control the left side, and the left side, control the right side. Um, the medulla oblongata contains three important vital centers, um, very, very important internal activities, respiration, the cardiac center, and vasomotor center. Okay, so when we're looking at, looking at that, it's controlling things like our heart rate, our blood pressure, breathing, swallowing, and vomiting. Then we have the cerebellum. Um, the cerebellum is this purplish part in the diagram here. Um, the book likes to call it cauliflower-like. I think of it kind of looking more like um, a plate of spaghetti. Um, but either way, something like that, okay? It projects dorsally, so out to, out to the back, and it is under the occipital lobe of the cerebrum. So you've got the occipital lobe up here under the occipital bone, and then the cerebellum is kind of underneath that. It controls um, skeletal muscle activity. Remember, skeletal muscle is for those involuntary movements, those things that we do um, every day. I'm sorry, I said involuntarily, but voluntarily. Okay, skeletal muscle is voluntary movement. So those things such as walking, riding, um, typing, we're all doing a whole lot of typing these days. Um, all of those voluntary movements are controlled by that cerebellum. Okay. Um, that's why um, when we have athletes that fall and hit the back of their head, sometimes they might have a little bit of balance issue. They might not be able to stand up straight. They might not be able to um, sit up straight, sit up well um, when that first happens. I'm sure you've all seen somebody um, take, a, take a good charge on the basketball floor and whack the back of their head um, on the basketball floor and then they go to stand up and they're kind of kind of staggering okay um, that is due to that damage to the cerebellum okay then we have a little bit on the spinal cord um, it's just that column of of nerve tissue that extends from the medulla oblongata to the second lumbar, lumbar vertebrae, okay? It ends at the second lumbar vertebrae. You can see it um, right here in the diagram, kind of ends at the second lumbar vertebrae, and then it spreads out to, the, to what we call the cauda equina, okay? Um, carries nerves to and from the limbs, the lower parts of the body. You can see all those nerves branching out to the limbs and the upper and lower parts of the body. This is kind of that path, that channel that sends those impulses from the sensory organs up to the spinal cord or up the spinal cord to the brain, gets analyzed, processed, and then it comes back down out to, to the um, extremities, to the limbs. That's all for tonight. Um, we are going to do some review activities and um, then we will look at protecting the spinal cord and brain.